live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2018. Brought to you by Informatica. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE live here in Las Vegas at the Venetian. This is Informatica World's exclusive coverage with theCUBE, Informatica World 2018. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, Jim Kobios, analyst at Wikibon, Silicon Angle and theCUBE. Our next guest is Tracy Ring, Vice President at Deloitte Consulting. Great to see you again. You as well. So, love having you on. Last year, we, you know, we, we go through all the interviews and you know, it always comes up, and this is important. We know we are passionate about women in tech um, and inclusion and diversity, huge topic. The job's never done. In fact, I was uh, in New York last week for a blockchain event and I wore a shirt that said, Satoshi is female. <laughs> and I literally was getting so many high fives. Um, but it's not just, women in tech, there's a role when men play. This mm -hmm. is some of the ongoing conversation. So what's the state of the, of the industry? From your perspective, how do you see it? Obviously the data world is, you know, indiscriminate data is data. You Absolutely. Know, we, it should be 50-50. Yeah, you know, it, I think that the, the opportunity is multifaceted, right? So we're in a place where technology is changing unbelievably fast. We're graduating, you know, nearly as many men as women in, um, you know, fields of science, data, analytics, computer engineering, et cetera. Um, but we're, we're not seeing um, a combination of women in leadership roles as much as we would expect. We're not seeing the retention of women in those roles. Um, and, you know, for me, I'm really, really passionate about the fact that, you know, in supporting, attracting, and, and keeping women in those roles is, is really critical, right? We, there's an interesting facet to how this all really, really plays together. Um, Deloitte for 20 years has had a women uh, initiative, right? 20 years of, of supporting women, um, embracing them, helping them support leadership roles. And, and I think that, uh, you know, the time is now. Um, if, if not, it's long overdue to really support them within this field. Um, I also think that Women in Data, uh, an initiative that we're launching this year and, and having our, our, our launch event uh, today, um, is, is sort of super timely because women in data is not women who will only become CIOs or will only become CDOs. These are women that will be the chief marketing officers, the CHROs, and, and using data to tell their stories. You know, we had a guest on earlier who was a man, but he was uh, head of the CDO for the Ireland um, Bank. And you know, Peter Burris asked him a question and said, hey, you know, where did you come from, technical? You no, know, he came from the business side, who mm. knows technology. Yeah. This is what you're getting at, and I think this is something that we've been seeing as a pattern, that you don't have to rise up to the ranks to be mm. super nerdy, although that's cool too, and we've seen yeah. a lot more STEM action, but there's also multiple vectors into the field. You can come from business and know tech, and a lot more tech is consumable mm -hmm. and learnable either online mm -hmm. or through some sort of other proficiency. So this is a big story, and so how do you guys, uh, looking at that at Deloitte, I know you, Deloitte's got a track record, but this all, it scales beyond Deloitte, right? It's an industry, an industry thing. How are you guys seeing this? How are you looking at helping people either connect the dots mm -hmm. or support each other? What's some of the, the latest and greatest. Yeah, I mean, I think Informatica is part of what has created the case for change, right? We've democratized data integration. We have, um, you know, made self-service analytics. We've, we've, we've put data in the cloud in everyone's hands, right? So technology is out there and more every single day. And, and I think the unique part is, is that when we think about diversity holistically, and, and I think of diversity from ages and, um, you know, geographic and gender, et cetera, I think really being able to take all of that diverse experience and be able to listen to business users' requirements in a way that, that they can hear it and, and listen for something different, right? Um, and, and bring skills to bear that aren't necessarily there. Uh, I think if we can build better technology that's more future-proofed based on having a diverse uh, crowd listening and, and, and trying to build something that's that's far more compelling than, you know, I asked for X, build me X. I'd, I think when we really do our clients and, and the world a justice is, is when we, you know, someone asks for X and you ask them 10 more questions and have you, what about this and what and what and what. And, and I think really being much more inquisitive, giving people the ability to be inquisitive and bringing more opinions to the table to be inquisitive. And bringing more diversity makes the applications better, so that's clear, we see that in some of the conversations we had. But I got to ask about the question of roles. What are you seeing, uh, kind of, you look at the, the trends. Mm -hmm. Are there certain roles that are, that are being adopted with women in tech more than others, less 
trending down, up? What are some of the trend lines on either roles in, in tech uh, for women? Yeah, you know, I think that overall, um, when I had the opportunity, so when we, we decided we're going to launch a program within Informatica, we want the women who are going to be the chief data officers of tomorrow. And it was a great question because actually what we ended up saying is the chief data officers of tomorrow could be so many different current roles right now, right? And how do we really kind of attract the right women into this cohort, support them for a long year and, and, and provide provide them the forum to network, connect with others, um, understand different career paths. Um, you know, looking at what we're seeing, you know, with GDPR and regulations and, and all these other things happening, you know, the concepts and, and roles that didn't even exist years ago, right? So data governance leads and, you know, chief analytic officers and- Or chief of AI those. officers. Exactly. How, do we, how do we break women <laughs> into the hottest fields like AI, deep learning? If you look at the research literature out of both the commercial and the academic world, many of the authors of the papers are men. I mean, more than the standard ratio of men to women in the corporate space, near as I can tell from my deep reading. How do you break women into AI, for example, when they haven't been part of that overall research community uh, that's, that's just a, there's no, it's almost like a rhetorical question. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, how do you not? That's, you know, it's, it's just impossible to not bring them to bear. I mean, the skills, the talent, um, the ingenuity, uh, I, I think it's it's absolutely mandatory. And, and someone said to me, they said, well, why are the men not invited to, the, to this event? Why, why are they not in the cohort? And, and I said, um, you know, because there's a component of all this that we want to grow and foster and support and, and create um, opportunities. You know, one of the uh, women that sat on our board today said, um, you know, I, I'm not somebody who's going to golf. I'm not someone who's going to go to a sports game. I'm, I'm going to meet you in the boardroom and we're going to talk about compelling topics there. Um, and so I think it's about um, encouraging and fostering a, a new way of networking that's more aligned with what women are interested in um, and what, what um, you know, sometimes we do best. And I think creating um, an opportunity for a different type of everything in the way that we operate is important. I think self-awareness and uh, for men, and it's also creating a good vibe, mm -hmm. right? Having a good vibe is critical, uh, in my opinion. And also, you know, not judging people, right? You know, based upon, you know, I have someone who says, hey, I like to, to get dressed up, and uh, that's what I am, and some people don't want to go to sports, and some guys want this. So I think, generally, there needs to be kind of a reset, like, hey, let's just have an open mind and a good vibe. It's like lunch and learns. You know, lunch and learns are, are a great enabler for centers of competence to get together on a regular basis to talk about business and technical related mm -hmm. things, but also it's a social environment. How can you build Okay. more of those kinds of opportunities into the corporate culture where they're not skewing the actual socializing to traditionally male-dominated hobbies or interests, yeah. or traditionally female-dominated hobbies or interests. How can you have sort of a, a, a balance of those kinds of socialization opportunities in a professionally appropriate environment that also involve a fair amount of shop talk? Because yeah. that's that's what gets people bonding and in m promoted in their careers yeah. is that they do deep sh shop talk in the yeah. appropriate settings. Yeah, I, it's interesting. One of the the women that I personally consider a mentor, she said, if it, if it wasn't for data, I wouldn't be where I am today. <clears throat> And she said, you know, I grew up in an industry where unfortunately, you know, I really didn't have a voice at the table. And my voice <laughs> at the table came from data. It came from my ability to see connections, patterns, and detect things. And also from my ability to create networks of people and make connections and pull things together in a way that my colleagues weren't doing. Mm -hmm. And you know, when she tells that story, I think that's that's the that's the template, that's right? The we we want to say use everything at your bevy to bring the best value to your business yeah. end users. And and she's connecting the dots in a way that no one else yeah. had, and is is using data as as really the impetus to to really solidify everything that she's saying. It's Arguable. That's like, a great story. It's, it's a phenomenal story. It's just story. amazing. Well, she got empowered. She really drove that hard. It was awesome. Well, let's take that to the next level. So, you know, I, was a, I have a daughter who's a junior at, at UCAL Berkeley, and you know, she's a STEM girl, and so she's got a 
good vibe in there. It's just, stem girl. So, I'm a stem you know, girl too. You know, and so on, I'm a side, but no, but she turned away from computer science because, at, you know, in middle school the vibe wasn't there. Yeah. Right, and it was kind of a social yeah. thing. As you mentioned social. Your advice to young women now, because we're seeing people with the democratization. You see YouTube. You see all these tools. You got robots. You got makerfish. You got data. Mm -hmm. You're seeing a lot more touch points where people can, you know, ingratiate in unthreatened, un, un you know, just getting immersed mm -hmm. in tech. Yeah. So you ha you're starting to get people to taste it, not being tracked into it. Absolutely. So what's the advice for young folks trying to navigate? And is it networking groups? Is it mentoring? What's the playbook in your mind? Yeah, I, I think it's a combination of everything that you've mentioned, right? I absolutely think that your network and, and what um, one of my mentors calls your sleeper network, right? The network that's out there, the people that I worked with five years ago and we worked and we're in a war room till 2 a.m. and you know, then I, I just got busy, right? And, and reactivating your sleeper networks, um, you know, having the courage to kind of keep people apprised, you using social media in a way that people, you know, the number of people that say, oh, I didn't know you're up to this, that, or the other, thank goodness you posted. And and so I think using all of the technology to your advantage. Um, and I also think there's a component of someone, I mean, I, I had an MIS degree for undergrad. And I started out as a developer. You might have to explain what that is for the younger generation. Oh, I know. <laughs> How crazy is that? Is, is that, that in the DP department? Oh my gosh. Was that Can in the DP imagine? department? Can you imagine? Man, but but I, I yeah. wasn't interested in technology that much. It was yeah. what was going to get me a job. And, and I thought I would become a business analyst. I've stayed with it and now really passionate about tech. But I think there's a component of all this that every job you know, yeah. the CHROs, the, the CAOs, all, all of the all of the roles that roll up, you know, every every finance person I know that's e exceptional is phenomenal with data, right? And <laughs> so I, I think, um, you know, not only creating a network of people that are in the industry, but I think it's about telling the stories outside the industry and, and, and telling the, oh my gosh, I can't, you'll never believe what we learned today. And and I think that's the, the magic of the stories and, and being transparent. Well, Tracy, you're an inspiration. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Really love the story. I got. I got to ask, what are you up to now? Tell us what's up with you. <laughs> You've moved on from MIS Management Information <laughs> Systems, part of the DP Data Processing Department. That's mini oh computer my. days. Oh my God, we're going. We're going to throw back there. Absolutely. What are you up to now? What do you have? Yeah. With? So uh, my day job, I have the luxury of um, working across our cognitive analytic and RPA alliances, which is a, an insane mouthful, but but means I get to work with um, some of our most exciting alliance partners that Deloitte is building solutions and and going to market and, and getting really great customer stories under our belt and and I think really kind of blowing the doors off of, of what we did three years ago, five years ago, and 20 years ago when MIS degrees were still being handed out. So, <laughs> I, you know. It's a lot more exciting now, isn't it? It's, it's way better now, so. Um, I wish I was 23 again. <laughs> yeah. Come back in time. <laughs> yeah, so um, really uh, holistically seeing what we consider ecosystems and alliances is, uh, that's my day job. Tracy Ring, Vice President great. Deloitte, great, great story, fun to have on theCUBE also. Doing some great work, super exciting time. You got cloud, you got data. It really is probably one of the most creative times in the tech industry. It's super, super fun to get involved. This, this is theCUBE here out in the open at Informatica World in Las Vegas. I'm John Furrier, Jim Cobills. We'll be back with more. Stay with us from Vegas. We'll be right back. Thank you.